I'm looking at it like this. Uh, today is a hot day, and we all like uh, lemonade, and a lemonade and a hot day goes well together. And uh, I could put the lemonade in this cup here, or I could put it in this fancy-looking bottle here, and I could sip it from, from each one, or I could have a straw. Straw could be long or short, different colors. But the bottom line is I'm getting the substance of that lemonade uh, through some different uh, medium. But it's the lemonade that's most important on a hot day. It's the music that uh, people are, are uh, being able to uh, obtain through listening to either webcast or, or AM, FM radio or satellite radio. Um, and uh, why shouldn't those, uh, why shouldn't the lemonade, the person who produced the lemonade get paid as opposed to just simply the, the persons who put together the packaging that the lemonade uh, happens to be served up in? Uh, anybody want to respond to that? Even though it may be a small business that is producing the packaging, shouldn't that, shouldn't that lemonade uh, developer get paid for uh, the lemonade? Why should, why should they be exempt for paying for that lemonade? Uh, Mr. I'll, I'll let Ms. Fink go first. Well, I, I agree with you. I'm an advocate for the rights of the artists and the fact that we deserve to be paid. And I do want to repeat a point that Mr. Lee made, which is that any artist, including Mr. Alcorn, is free to make his own independent deals with independent webcasters to say, you don't have to pay me. But I don't want that to affect whether or not I get paid for the lemonade that I made. If he wants to give his lemonade away for free, that's his right. We live in a great country to be able to make that kind of deal. I want to get paid for my lemonade. It costs me something. And I put my work into it. If you want your lemonade in this cup, if you put the people that make this cup out of business, what are you going to put it in? They don't have a business if we haven't made lemonade. Well, now that's an excellent point. That's a, that's, <laughs> well, they're both, they're, both, they're both good points. They're both good points. Another. I, mean, yeah, I mean, it is the lemonade, though, that gives rise to the, uh, to the packaging. I mean, just lemonade laying out on a on a table is just going to run. It's off no good table. to you. That's right. <laughs> can't, can't get the straw into it. Can't. So you know, and in the in the aspect of internet radio, you have to have those people to deliver the music. And if you, you want your it. lemonade, you have to have the people making the cup, whether it's the big cup or the little cup. However, you choose to get it, like you said, it you you have to have a a delivery method. But every small business or every business has business costs right it costs to go into business you got to pay for the supplies you got to pay for the uh, you got to pay for the lemons you got to pay for the sugar you got to pay for the ice but what if the cup costs more than the lemonade well then you have to find a know, different you know, manufacturer you with a, a, a <laughs> bottle like this that looks so good that you spend about four or five dollars for the lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes, ma'am. Well, I would like to say, um, you know, there is a cost of doing business, and in all businesses, not just the music industry, in all businesses, not all businesses succeed. Not all small artists can make a living doing this. Therefore, they go out and get the day jobs that Tom Lee was talking about. Not all internet radio companies are going to survive. But that's true with every business. Not every bicycle company survives. Not every inventor creates an invention that survives the marketplace. And I think that there is a long-term uh, opportunity for everyone to create the best business plan they can so they can work within a system that uh, that exists and well, maybe, you know maybe mr. Silverman's dad has another five or ten thousand dollars to invest in a, <laughs> uh, in the operations of a webcam mr. Silverman and I'm gonna yield the floor to uh, to the, the next uh, questioner may I quickly uh, yeah I may have to go back to my dad because I'm running out myself my revenues have been cut in half by illegal file sharing and CD copying at Tommy boy combined with 
commercial terrestrial radio's consolidation, forcing tighter playlists. It's harder for me to get my music exposed on the radio than it was in the 80s and early 90s. But I still have to pay artists and writers, uh, and I still have to pay all my other expenses, which are going up. Uh, I have to find new ways to monetize my business and keep it alive. Uh, Internet radio can and will find ways to prosper, and we'll have to pay fair rates for the music that they depend on, just as we do. I don't think it's fair that they should get a break when we don't get a break. I have to pay my artists. They, they should have to pay them as well. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Heller uh, is next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to stay away from lemonade here for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of starting a lemonade business. <laughs> my 11-year-old uh, daughter would uh, help you out with that one. Um, there, is everybody here from Shabbat's district? Is that what I'm <laughs> figuring out here? Anybody from Nevada? Because um, that's, that, that's where I'm coming from. Anyway, any uh, artists uh, that uh, want to come down to Las Vegas, uh, I know Celine Dion's uh, contract is running out. And they're looking for a <laughs> replacement, so I wish you the best. Um, they offer it to me, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, the Day of Silence, actually, uh, it was mentioned to me a couple of days in my office and didn't think uh, much of it until I got a couple of phone calls yesterday um, um, from individuals that uh, wanted to know what was going on. One, of course, being my brother, and I asked him why, uh, why uh, he listened to webcast uh, um, music, and he says because the regular stations don't play the music that he wants to listen to. So your point is well made uh, on uh, why webcast has played an important role. Uh, part in this business. I guess my question is this. I uh, come from a state that, or a district that's 110,000 square miles, and you get outside of Las Vegas and perhaps Reno, Lake Tahoe area, you get to some very rural areas. And we still have some very small mining towns. And uh, outside of, I guess, uh, Sirius Radio or XM Radio, their only access in many of these small mining towns is, uh, uh, is the webcast. I guess my question uh, is, uh, that's my concern, is access. Access to music and the access to the kind of music that these people want to listen to. And if anybody on this panel has any remarks or comments of what we're going to do if uh, these royalty fees are such that we do uh, turn off some of these webcast stations and do cause a, a concern in these rural stations, what is going to be the uh, alternative for them? Yes. I personally think it's unrealistic to portray this as if every small webcaster is going to go down the drain because of this. And I think that the publicity around this has made it sound like that. And I don't really think that's a fair portrayal of what's going to happen. Those who, since we're talking about small business, those small webcasters who are in business and create a business plan that cr that provides you know viability for them that includes this compromised royalty rate that sound exchange has offered are going to survive and i don't really think it's fair to say they're all going to disappear and all the music's going to disappear you you do have three uh, okay. that believe that actually will be the case there are actually three of us here who believe that will be the case specifically for the small webcasters and um, several large so. ones as and well. and several large as well yeah but but definitely I mean I think you and I definitely think like particularly this subgenre uh, very very um, the very small markets of music like uh, one that I would just I was just introduced to uh, called gothic country which I'd never heard of before in combination <laughs> of Marilyn Manson with traditional country music <laughs> but nevertheless, those listeners deserve to have access. They deserve to have access to um, that that music and the ability to explore, you know, uh, the deepest of subgenres of music. And particularly, like you mentioned, in in these areas that are quite remote, whereas it used to be in urban, uh, you know, in urban settings, where the only places where people were exposed to. Um, you know, say the more uh, counterculture uh, forms of music, or things that were very, very, very niche oriented, and I think both uh, Joey and I, I want to make make sure that that stuff is pre preserved as the ability to be pe of people to be exposed to that, and then how it will enrich you know culture, you know, um, at large. And and you've mentioned about deeper classical artists as well. I think um, in the same way, this isn't just a matter of you know country or rock or hip hop or something like that, but you know classical um, classical music and and more elaborate uh, musical art forms like will have the same benefits as, as well that that can in fact you know elevate um, refine society as well so